I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand upon the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself. And mine eyes shall behold, and not another. We brought nothing in this world, and it is certain that we could carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, let me know mine end and the number of my days that I may certify how long I have to live. Behold, thou hast made my days as it were a span long, and mine age is even as nothing in respect of thee. Verily every man living is altogether vanity. Man walketh in a vain shadow and disquieteth himself in vain. He heapeth up riches and cannot tell who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what is my hope Truly my hope is even in thee. Deliver me from all mine offenses and make me not a rebuke unto the foolish. When thou with rebukes thus chasten man for sin, Thou maketh his beauty to consume away, like as it were a moth, fretting a garment. Every man, therefore, is but vanity. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and with thine ears consider my calling. Hold not thy peace at my tears for I am a stranger with thee and a sojourner as all my fathers were oh spare me a little that I may recover my strength before I go hence be no more seen Lord, thou hast been my refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever the earth and the worlds were made, thou art God from everlasting, the world without end. Thou turneth man to destruction. Again thou sayest, Come again, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, seeing that it is past as a watch in the night. As soon as Thou scattereth them, they are even as asleep. Fade away suddenly, like the grass. In the morning, it is green, 
grow it up. But in the evening, it's cut down, dried up, and withered. But we are consumed away in our displeasure and are afraid thy wrathful indignation. Thou hast set our misdeeds before us and our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For when thou art angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end, as it were a tale that is told. The days of our age are threescore years and ten. And though men be so strong, they come to fourscore years. Yet is their strength then but labor and sorrow. So soon passeth it away, and we are gone. So teach us to number our days that we might apply our hearts unto wisdom. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, tis now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. To all the ministers and the pastors, the officers and members of the St. John Baptist Church, Bostick Thompson's Funeral Home and staff, and to the family of our dearly departed sister, mother, Queen, Esther Reed Glimp Anderson, our hearts and our prayers go out to you at this time of your bereavement. It is a time of mixed emotions, it's a time of sadness because of the loss of a great mother, grandmother, Christian soldier, confidant, child of God. But it's also a time of great joy because we're celebrating the life, the work, the legacy, the impact, the influence of such a wonderful, awesome and mighty woman of God, Sister Esther E. Glimp Anderson. As we celebrate her life, we're going to lift up hymn number 27, Blessed Assurance, after which the Old Testament scripture will be led by Reverend Alfonso Counts, New Testament Reverend Preston Wilson, prayer by Reverend Ozell Cheatham, solo from Sister Rose Moore, and I'll be back. Let's lift up our voices, hymn number 27, Blessed. Assurance. Of rapture now burst on my side. 
angels descending, rain from above, echoes of mercies, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my praise. Oh, yes, all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my praise. Oh yes, oh, the, oh this is, this is praise. Hallelujah, one more time. Oh, this is. Oh, yes. Oh, this is. Glory be to God. Praise my Savior all the day long. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen for the Holy Spirit. Can we give God a praise for a life well lived? I know this is a sad moment because she is transitioned, but she has received her reward. This, her works have spoken for her. And we thank God for allowing her to be in our midst that we can experience her for these generations. Notice I said generations. See, some people have to be on platform or be on podium to have an impact. But Ms. Esther e. Anderson was always behind the scenes, but she had an impact. For me, it started in high school when she started coming around after we got our church and she would give a hug and give a kiss on the side of your cheek. And she said, now keep on doing good things, sweet boy. She always gave a word of encouragement. Then later on, as we became young adults, she started working with us in the ministry of food, food working in, with the food and working, and working in, the, uh, in the background of uh, the funeral services and those kind of things. And she always had something funny to say, you know, because she was like my mom. Whatever came on her mind came out of her mouth. But it was some wisdom there. So family, it's a tough day. But you got something to be very proud of. She invested for her family. She invested for her faith. And she invested for your future. It was an honor to be able to serve with her and to know her as a, a surrogate mother. So for the words of comfort for you and for me, We've asked to read Proverbs 31. And it reads, The heart of her husband safely trusts her so that she will have no lack or no gain. And excuse me, he will have no lack or gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household. You know she loved to cook. And a portion for her maidservants. She considers a field and buys it. For her profit, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchant's dice is good and her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the staff and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments 
and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. The works of Esther e. Anderson have spoken for her. She invested in her family so you could be together. She invested in the food so you could be together. And most of all, she invested in her faith so you all could be together. May these words bring you comfort in the days and the months and the years to come. Good afternoon. The New Testament scripture on this afternoon is taken from the book of John. The 14th chapter of John, and I will be reading from the King James Version on, on this afternoon. In this passage of, of, of scripture this afternoon, Christ is instructing his the, 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 the disciples here. He is instructing them that when you trust God daily, when you believe in God, and like Mrs. Anderson, when you keep the statutes of God daily, then you need not fear death. Amen? Listen this afternoon as Christ instructs his disciples. He says unto them, let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. He said that in my Father's house are many mansions. And he said, if it were not so, I would have told you. And Christ said, I go to prepare a place for you. And he said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go you know, and the way you know. And his disciple to Thomas says unto him, Lord, but we, we do not know where thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus says unto him that I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. May these words this afternoon not only be of comfort to this family, but may these words be of comfort to all of us. Thank you. I didn't know Ms. Anderson as Reverend Counts did, but what I did know was a quiet dignity that she had as she sat right over there. It would seem that after every service, she would come to me and just shake my hand and smile. She didn't have to say anything, but you could just see in her eyes, in her smile, the love that she had. To this family, I want to say that she was a great person. Let us pray. I pray that you get strength from our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of our universe. Our Father in heaven, we come to you right now as humble as we know how. We come to you in a manner as I believe Miss Anderson did millions of times. First of all, Lord, we want to say thank you for being good to us. We want to say thank you for allowing Ms. Anderson to cross our paths. Lord, we ask that you would bless this family, bless her friends, bless her daughters, bless her grandchildren, bless each and every one who's touched by her. Lord, I want to thank you for allowing her to cross my path. Thank you for allowing her to be a part of St. John Baptist Church. Lord, be with us. We shall miss her. But Lord, we know that you have a mansion for her because you promised in your word, in the word of God, that 
you would come for us and that you had a mansion built for us. Lord, we ask you to bless us right now and bless those who cherish her memory. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Hey! 
Hallelujah. Why don't you shout glory? Shout hallelujah. Glory be to God. Yes, Mother Anderson is free. No longer bound. Hallelujah. Free from sickness and free from troubles and free from trials. We praise God. Hallelujah. She's free. Amen. Glory be to God. Thank you, Sister Rose Moore. I am free. Glory be to God. If Jesus is to tarry any longer, we all will need someone to speak on our behalf. And it's good to live so. Someone can speak on your behalf. We'll have remarks from Dr. Elliot Tolbert, the grandson, Sister Caitlin Hereford, uh, the granddaughter, Sister Amanda Myers, the granddaughter, and Sister Janice Myers, the daughter. And we'll ba be back with a solo from Sister Rose Moore. Yours truly will be back. Those of you on my left, you can use the podium to my left. Those on my right, you can use the podium to my right in that order. Amen. Amen. So one thing about Esther e. G. Anderson is that she said what she meant and she meant what she said. So today I'm going to share a lot of special moments with you and I'm going to mean what I say as I say what I mean. So every moment with grandma was a lesson in life. And I think everyone that knew her or even encountered her could, is a testament to that. The fact that she built her house, she bought her car, she had her own business, and then she did all this back in a time when black people were fighting for freedom, human rights. A lot of the fights we're still fighting for today. She did all of this. She had no TikTok. She had no Go, GoFundMe. She had no Amazon. She had no Google. She had none of the, all of the luxuries that we have offered to us today, but she still did it. I can recall being a child driving her around Columbia. I can't remember what kind of car it was, but it was a big car. It was a loud car. It may have been a Buick or a Chevy. Titanic sized car. And one day we passed a specific restaurant and she said, Elliot, look right over there. And I said, what grandma, what? And she said, you know, that restaurant right there, back in the day, if you were black, you couldn't get your food from the front door. You had to go around to the back door. And I said, well, Grandma, why'd you have to go to the back door? And she said, well, Elliot, it's just the way things were. That doesn't mean it was right. That doesn't mean they can't change. But that's just the way that things were, which is the, the best answer you could give to a child who was innocent and had no idea how the real world could be. She told me, you just have to put things in God's hands. Grandma always forgave. Now, she'd never forget, but she always forgave. Grandma was raised in the church. She raised her chaps in the church. She raised her grandchaps in the church. I'm one of the grandchaps. She uh, 
never missed the opportunity to help those around her in their times of need. If someone was sick and shut in, she was there. She was an avid member of the Pauline Russell Missionary Circle. And if you ever attended any event in St. John, especially helping the homeless during the holidays, you knew that you were in her kitchen if you were in that kitchen. Yes, Grandma knew how to take care of business. An uh, example of this would be Classic Beauty Salon in historic Columbia, South Carolina. This is a place where I got to see her in action. As a child, I didn't understand exactly what was going on or how dangerous the work she was doing actually was. Because we all know if you're willing to let somebody come that close to your head with the styling tools that it takes to style hair the way that she did, you know you have to put trust into that person. She was using the old school hair tools. There was no thermometer on the side. And she would put that tool inside of an oven and then put it right to her client's head. I'd ask her, Grandma, how do you know how hot it is? And she'd say, well, you know, Elliot, you just know. I've been doing this for a long time. So that was a lesson learned right there. Practice makes perfect. Uh, it was not just hair she was doing while she was in there. She was also helping people's lives. Because if you were going through something and grandma was working on your hair, you could talk to her about anything. She was the one, she was the go-to for everybody. And so just watching her working in her shop, serving people, I got to see how it's not just what you do, it's how you do it and how it impacts people. Anybody that knew grandma knew her chaps, Joyce, Janice, and Jeanette, lovingly known as Dee Dee. One particular story that comes to mind in which a young Joyce was feeding her identical baby twin sisters, Janice and Dee Dee. Joyce had fed one sister, turned to do something, and then turned back and forgot which one she had fed. So Joyce runs up to Mama and says, Mama, they tricked me. I don't know who I fed. And she said, well, go ask them. Joyce goes up to Janice. Did I feed you yet? Janice, mm-mm. <laughs> Joyce goes up to Jeanette. Did I feed you yet? Mm-mm. <laughs> Joyce goes back to mom. Mom, I don't know what to do. Grandma tells her, well, they got you this time, but next time you know what to do. Keep an eye on them and watch what you're doing. So grandma's chaps went on to become trailblazers in their own rights. Dee Dee and Janice desegregated their elementary school. Joyce became the first person to earn a PhD in public health from the University of South Carolina. And her grand chaps went on to do great things and continue to do great things. Those are grandma's chaps. But it wasn't just grandma's chaps that were family, it was the whole neighborhood. Everybody around her was, was one of grandma's chaps. She cared for people, she fed them, she did their hair. It's another lesson that I learned from grandma. Don't look for what you can get out of people, but look for what you can do to serve them. Ask them what they need in their, during their time of need. So this is just the, the tip of the iceberg when it comes to my grandmother's accomplishments during her 92 years of love, service, happiness, family, friends, and joy. I know that she's here with us right now with Aunt Dee and all of our other loved ones that are in heaven celebrating her life with her 
right now. And so, Grandma, we love you. We're going to take your message to always be sweet with us today and every day. You are an angel who earned your wings here on earth, and now you're spreading your wings in heaven. Thank you. I know Reverend Graham told us to go to the right or left. I was gonna follow my cousin and stand in the center, but I'll follow instructions. Um, thank you everyone for being here to celebrate the full life and legacy of my grandmother, y'all's mother, your family member, and our good friend, Esther e. Anderson. As she would want me to do, I'll lead with scripture. Um, also, forgive me, I know we rocked the King James Version of St. John. I'll be reading from NIV today. Please forgive me. Um, I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, I think, yeah, 15 verses 1 through 2, and then I'll skip to verses 50 through 58. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. Now skip to 50 through 58. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. Then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. In verse 55, I actually have tattooed on my right arm, which my grandmother never knew. She never knew I had a tattoo, so forgive me, please. But verse 55, where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So for those of you that had the privilege of knowing Grammy, as I refer to her in a lot of, of us grandchildren, and if you spent time with her, you know that she reveled in the labor of the Lord. If God loves a cheerful giver, he was absolutely smitten with Grammy. From spending countless hours in this building with this congregation, anything from being in fellowship with the Pauline Russell Missionary Circle making food for Vacation Bible School, her devout tithing, and her frequent visits to members of the church who were sick and shut in. Esther was a cheerful giver. Her giving spirit was in no way confined to these four walls. Outside of the church, she could be found making delicious meals that our family gathered around to create some of our favorite moments together. She could be found kikiing and cracking jokes with her girlfriends on her landline phone. She could be found headed up the road to Newberry to visit her brothers and sisters in times of need, but often for fun. She could be found teaching her grandchildren how to be responsible with our finances. She could also be found teaching her grandchildren the priceless value of integrity and how sacred it is. She could be found loving all of her friends and family through her actions, and lastly, not only did she tend to the sick and shut-in members of this church, but sadly, we also watched her take care of her daughter and my mother, Didi, up until the second she passed 20 years ago. I'm deeply saddened by Grammy's passing on. As long as I live, there will be a Grammy-sized hole in my heart. However, I stand before you all today 
absolutely encouraged. From Grammy's lifelong teaching, I'm encouraged by the reminder from scripture that death of her bodily flesh has no victory or no sting. She has victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, through her ever active faith and works. And y'all know as good as I do that once Esther Reed pulled up to the pearly gates, she skipped the line and went right on in. We all know that. The life she lived on this earth and the way she loved and helped all of us ensured her place in eternal peace and paradise. I'm also encouraged and truly excited for her to reconnect with her daughter, my mother Dee Dee in heaven. I imagine them linking up in heaven sounds like two homegirls at happy hour. Like, girl, took you long enough to get here. Or, girl, can you believe how expensive gas prices were down there? Or, girl, I could go for some carrot raisin salad at Chick-fil-A right now, something they both love, which is very weird. All jokes aside, I'm forever thankful for every second I was able to spend with Grammy. And I'm thankful for every smile we shared, every argument we had, because we're very similar people, every laugh we cracked, and every tear we shed. I can confidently and proudly say that I'm shaped by her love, her faith, and her teaching. The last time I spoke with her, she said she wanted to have a party with all her friends and family. Grammy, I know this is not the party you imagine, but we're all here to celebrate you. I love you, and we love you. Thank you. That was beautiful, Elliot Caitlin. I'm gonna try and follow that. Mrs. Estery Glimp Anderson, one of a kind, a diamond in the rough. Words cannot describe how I feel about my grandmother, and I doubt that they would do any justice to the impact that she has had on my life and countless others. To the world, she was a giver, a provider, a leader, and a change maker. To the people closest to her, she was a daughter, a sister, a mother, a wife, an aunt, a cousin, a friend. But to me and the rest of the grandchildren, she was Grammy. The lessons she has taught me will stay with me for the rest of my life. She taught me the essentials of how to be a young lady, how to carry myself, how to speak to others, how to be of service to others. She would often take me and my brother and my cousins on trips to Newberry or to parts of Columbia to attend celebrations or other functions. She taught us that showing up was one of the most important things you could do. Some of my fondest memories are of attending church right here with her. This is one of her favorite places. I can see her now sitting on her favorite row. I would often find her on that row and sit next to her with the rest of my family. She was always so proud and happy whenever she saw us. She would get up every morning before church and make sure the food was prepared when we got back home. One of her favorite things to do was read the state newspaper. And the Sunday paper was always the best one. It was the biggest with the ads and full color comics. I would love to just sit on her bed and read them. Much like my mom, she loved to shop. We would often find Belk and Macy's bags throughout the house but she wasn't just buying for herself. She would say, Amanda, try this on. Look what I bought you. And let me tell you, my grandma had the best taste in clothes. She loved beautiful, bright, and vibrant colors, very much an extension of her personality. And we would never ask her for clothes. She would just buy them. That was one of the ways she showed her love for us. Every December, she would ask me to write out all of her Christmas cards to family, friends, church members, and she basically knew everyone in Columbia and in Newberry. Her address book was thick. She would handwrite every single person she knew. I would get the cards and write down each address in cursive, a requirement, and then stamp her name on the inside 
And yes, she had a stamp with her name. It said, love Estery Anderson and family. Those things we did together created such a strong bond. I had her back and I knew she had mine. Christmases were always the best. Being with the entire family, aunts, uncles, cousins, playing board games and just laughing and talking to the late hours of the evening. But when it was time to go, she was ready for us to go. She would say, okay, y'all need to get out. Time for y'all to go home. And we would say, Grammy, are you kicking us out? She would say, yep. She was very independent, but she loved everybody, but she loved her space, okay? See, some people didn't know she was also a comedian, always telling stories and jokes and calling it like she saw it. We laughed so much with her. As you leave here today, I just want you to remember something. When you think about courage, think of Miss Estery. When you think about sacrifice, think of Miss Estery. When you think about dedication, think of Miss Estery. When you think about strength, think of Miss Estery. When you think about kindness, think of Miss Estery. The list of people she has helped is long and wide but she never did it for the glory, for the praise, or for the attention. She did it because her heart was one of service. She was a true servant of God, one of his finest. He gained the brightest and the best. I love you, and I'll miss you every day of my life. She affectionately gave me the nickname of Lollipop, and I will always be your Lollipop. I just want to say thank you to everyone that showed up today. It shows me how much my mother meant to you. And I just want to share a few thoughts and some memories of my life with my mother. Those of you who knew my mother, Miss Estery Glimp Anderson, can attest to her love for the Lord. I do believe that her love of the Lord gave her the strength to be an advocate for her family, for the community, and for anyone in need. I'll always remember how she was selfless and how she gave without warning anything in return. She was a true leader of her family, of her church, and the community. She ensured that her brothers and sisters had everything they needed food, clothing, or just her knowledge. She wanted everyone to learn how to make their own way in the world. The holidays, as you heard, were always special and meant a lot to her. When you entered into the house on Christmas Day, you had to run and put your pocketbook down. If not, she would say, what you standing around looking at me for? Get busy, put the silverware on the table, wash the glasses, and take down the plates. Then she would say, what's wrong with you? You can't move any faster than that? I made sure I took two Advil before I walked into her house. But just know that the rest of the day together was filled with laughter, love, and fun. Gifts had to be arranged in a certain way. Everyone got a gift, even if it was a re-gift. She would say, I got this gift from Mr. Miller, but go ahead and give it to one of the boys. Well, and she even gave one of my gifts that I gave her to another family member. I walked into the room and they had the gift on. That's how much they loved the gift. Mom was dedicated to her church. 
just as much as she was to her own family. She made sure she attended all of the meetings, supported her Pauline Russell Circle sisters, and took pride in the positions that she held at the church. She often visited the sick and the shut-in. She wanted to let them know that they weren't forgotten. I have watched her work ethic ever since I was a little girl. Her way of going about business became my way. She taught me how to never give up and endure tough and challenging times. She would never th say that she was tired, and she never complained. Unfortunately, I didn't inherit that trait. <sighs> but she had a fun, spirit, sen spirited sense of humor. I did inherit that particular trait. She would sit around, talk, laugh, and share funny stories. Whenever I needed to, for her to pray for me, she was always there. Whenever I needed encouragement, she was there. If I was ever worried about something, she would say, don't worry about that. When the roles reversed and I needed to take care of her, Everything she taught me was already in my DNA. I was a soldier for my mother's care and well-being. I protected her, I advocated for her, and I made sure that I laid my eyes on her every single day, just to ensure that she was okay. I sat and I spent time with her every day until she passed. Whenever she would see me, she would say, how was your day? Sometimes I would say I was, I was tired, and she would say, tired? No, you shouldn't be tired. You never get tired. I would then ask her about her day, and she would say it was good. Ain't no use in complaining, she would always say. Every month for the last few years, I would ask her, are you ready to come home with me? And she would always say no. She said, I love my independence, but I'll let you know when I'm ready to come home. But I asked her again, and she finally said she was ready to come home with me. On last Sunday, when I asked my mother that question, she said, Janice, I'm ready to come home with you. I brought my mother to my home with me and my family, but God already knew the plans for my mother. Early Wednesday morning, on August 30th, my mother said in a voice I haven't heard before, she said, I'm ready. I asked her, where were we going? She said, I'm ready to go. I did not make the connection that she was going home to be with the Lord. God saw it fit to take my mother here to eternal rest. My heart is broken, and I'm asking you all today to please pray for me as I learn how to navigate this world without my beloved mother by my side. Up until the time she died, she never forgot any of us, family, friends. I want to thank God that I was able to take care of my mom and I can hold my head up high today knowing that I gave my mom my all. Cherish every moment that God gives you with your mother. Treat her like a precious jewel we only get one. Mama, your memories are deeply rooted in my spirit and soul. You were my everything. Let the work you've done, Mama, speak for you.
If you want to know where I'm going. Where I am going, where I am going to, I'm going up yonder, I'm going up yonder, I'm going I'm going up yonder, I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord, yeah. I can take the pain, the heartaches they bring, the comfort in no end, I'll soon be gone. God gives me grace. I'm going to run this race until I see my Savior face to face. Oh, I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder. I'm going Glory, 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 glory. She's up yonder with the Lord. Amen. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And in his presence there is fullness of joy. Let's praise God for the life, work, and legacy again for Sister Esri Glimp Anderson. Amen. Amen. We praise God. We praise God for all that's been said and done about her. And we praise God for her life, her work, her legacy. We praise God that 20 years ago, uh, she was one of the mothers when I came to St. John that took me in. And we praise God for her selfless, sacrificial uh, love for the Lord, for the people of God, for the church, and for her family. Amen? Amen. And uh, as I came to St. John's, I found her as one of those worker bees who is always doing something for the Lord and in the church. And she ran a tight ship, and we praise God.
for her. Amen. Amen. I want to also uh, thank God for uh, her family ministry unit. I want to ask the Wallace Rogers Worthy Counts family ministry unit to please stand. Amen. Just to be recognized, I want to certainly praise God for the love and the commitment that you had in serving uh, Sister Esri in her last few years. Amen. And while she could not uh, be here at the church, we were able to serve and we praise God for her. Amen. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. We're going to ask that you return with us to Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 14. It says, In the day of prosperity, be joyful. But in the day of adversity, in the day of sorrow, consider. Consider. Surely God has appointed to the one as well as the other, so that man can find out nothing that will come after him. I want to use for a theme or a thought these brief moments we have together. In the time of sorrow, consider life. Consider life's dimensions. Life's dimensions. The writer of Ecclesiastes talks about what to do in the time of prosperity and in the time of adversity. He talks about what to do in the time of joy and in the time of sorrow. He said, in the day of prosperity, be joyful. But in the day of adversity, in the day of, of, of distress, in the day of grief, in the day of troubles or sorrows, consider, consider, consider. Consider who? Consider what? I would suggest to you that in the day of your sorrows, we need to consider God. Consider life. And as it is, relates to the death of our mother, I would encourage you, in the day of sorrow, consider the life of a mother. Not her death, but her life. And so, a few moments, let us consider God and the life of a mother. Let's consider the life of Mother Esther E. Anderson the mother of three daughters, one who preceded her in death, the mother of several grandchildren. In death and in grief, consider the life of this mother. What do we want to consider about Mother Esther e. Anderson? Family and friends, let's take for a moment to consider, like, look at example, as an example, consider the dimensions of her life. And the first thing I want to lift up about the life of Mother Esther e. Anderson is consider her as a gift from God. In the time of sorrow, consider her as a gift from God. James realized that every good and perfect gift come from above. And I would submit to you today that God gave us the gift of life. And within this gift of life, God gave us the gift of a mother's life, a mother's love. Mother Esther e. Anderson is a gift from God. Not only is she a gift or was a gift to her parents in her childhood days, but she was also a gift to her children in her adult days. Listen, she took care of her children in that she helped provide for them. But she also is a gift to her children and other children in that she helped discipline and directed them in the right way. Then she was a gift to her children and others in that she taught them the value of hard work. We heard this in her grandchildren talking about the value of hard work, the value of doing things right, the value of knowing and living for God. What a gift from God. Yes, God gave us a gift in Mother Esther e. Anderson. What a beautiful soul. What a, what a mother of great, quiet strength, Christ-like spirit. She had such a strong faith and a peaceful heart and home. When she started having health challenges, she never gave up. She kept the faith. She did, not, she did what she could until she could no longer 
serve. So family, in times of sorrow, consider your mother, your grandmother, who walked by faith, who was a gift from God. Secondly, in the day of sorrows, consider life as an opportunity. Consider her life as an opportunity. Each day of life brings new experiences. And each day of life brings special opportunities to be a blessing to others. And a few have greater privilege than a mother. She can take the various experiences of life. I'm talking about a mother. She can take the various experiences of life, the joys and the sorrows, the good and the bad, the ups and the downs, and mix them with her faith and love and cause them to work together for the good in the life of her children. You know that's true. Even in the bad times, a mother with her faith in God and love can bring something good out of it. Even when you are down, depressed, and seemingly in a mess, a mother can use her time as an opportunity to share her faith, to teach you a lesson of life, to lift your spirit. And so in your sorrows today, children, consider all the opportunities that your mother, your grandmother, sister used to brighten your day to lift your spirit, to teach you a lesson, to give you hope, to build your faith. But she did not stop with her children. Mother Esther Anderson took advantage of opportunities to serve the Lord, to serve the people of God, to serve St. John, to serve her community. She served on the hospitality ministry, on the culinary and kitchen ministry. She served as a, as a member of the Pauline Russell Missionary Circle and many, many more. One thing I, that stood out to me about her is her service. Is that one thing that, that stood out to me is she and a few other missionaries would take the live flowers from the altar. Of course, you, we would have live flowers every Sunday uh, morning. And, of course, they would take the live flower from the altar. They would divide them up, take them to the sick and shut in, and brighten their day. That's the kind of resourceful spirit that our mother had. She would always find ways to lift somebody's spirit, always find ways to encourage someone along the way. That's the spirit of this mother. She, had an opp- she always used opportunity to do good. And so, family, I encourage you today to carry on your mother's legacy by taking advantage of every opportunity to do good, to serve the Lord, to love your family, to serve your fellow man, and to give glory to God. In your sorrows, consider life as an opportunity to get it right. Life as an opportunity to try it again. Life as an opportunity to give God glory, to bring your family closer together. And so in our sorrows, when we consider life as an opportunity, it leads us to consider life as an influence. Somebody say influence. The third dimension of life reminds us that life is an influence. Whether you believe it or not, the most significant fact accompanying life is influence. We are constantly lifting people up or bringing people down by our influence. That's why we have to be careful who we listen to, who we hang out with, because while we're influencing others, somebody is influencing us. And the influence of a mother in our lives is greater than anyone else in life. We know that A mother has great influence on her son because 2 Corinthians 22 22 verse 3 says, the king's mother has his counsel. But a mother also has great influence on her daughters. Why? Because Ezekiel chapter 16 verse 44, we find these words, as is the mother, so is her daughter. We we all know that Mother Esther Reed had a great influence on her daughters, on her granddaughters, on her grandsons. We know that. We all know that Mother Esther Reed had a great influence. She prayed for them. She pushed them. And, 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 and God blessed each of them 
to, be, to have successful careers. Why? Because of the influence of their mother, Esther And so those of us who have been privileged by having Christian mothers know that even now, even now, she being dead still speaks. Hebrews 11 and 4. Even while Mother Esther is dead, guess what? Her life still speaks to us today. Yes, our mothers don't have to be physically present, but their influence is upon us even now. I find myself nurturing and disciplining my children like my mother nurtured and disciplined me. Though Mother Esther is dead, yet her influence still speaks to and through her children, her grandchildren, her family, her friends, and her neighbors. So, in your sorrows today, consider life as an influence. But then finally, in your sorrows today, consider life as an eternal reality. Death and the grave are not the end. While, while the body of our beloved goes to the grave and eventually returns to the dust from which it came, her soul lives on into eternity. Christ revealed unto us both by his teachings and by his own resurrection that death is not the end. He tells us plainly that there are, there are, are really two eternities. One is called hell. The other is called heaven. One is called hell, a place of suffering and sorrows and remorse. The other is called heaven, a place of great beauty, of blessed fellowship and glorious rest. And for the Christian, Christ came into the world to die on the cross to save us from our sins and to save us from eternal hell. But his grace by his grace, in our faith in him, guess what? We can move from life to life. And that's what Sister uh, Mother uh, Esther did. She, not, she didn't move from life to death. She moved from life to life. She entered heavenly home. She, what? she entered that presence with Christ. Yes, I'm glad that death is not the end. I'm glad that death is just a vehicle to transport us into eternity. Oh, death. Where is thy sting? I'm so glad our sister, the granddaughter, read that scripture. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm glad that Mother Esther Anderson is in a better place. For Paul says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And in his presence, there's fullness of joy. And so Mother Esther Anderson today, life is an eternal reality. The former things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Her sickness has passed away. Her troubles have passed away. Her trials have passed away. No more heartaches. No more pain. No more doctors. No more disappointments. She's fought a good fight. She's finished her course. She's kept the faith. And now there's laid up for her a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give her at that day. Not only for her, but all those who love his appearing. And so, family, in your sorrows today, remember that the true lessons of life is life and living. In your sorrows today, consider life as a gift. In your sorrows today, consider life as an opportunity. Consider life as an influence. Consider life as an eternal reality. Your mother had all of those dimensions in her life, and she has made an impact on not only this family, but on everyone she came in contact with. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. And now there's laid up for me a crown. Thank God that she lived a life. I've done my work. I've sung my song. I've done some good. I've done some wrong. And I shall go where I belong. The Lord has willed it so. He knows my heart and every thought. 
He knows what pain and joy I brought. And by his love I shall be taught the way to him I know. He knows my soul so weak and blind, so full of fears of mortal mind. And he shall lead and I shall find the way to him I know. He guides my step. He knows best. He will not harm where he is blessed. And so good night, I'll take my rest where the sweet wild roses grow. Where the sweet wild roses grow. In your sorrows, consider a mother's life. God bless you. Let us all stand except for the family.